happy Memorial Day. We are at Sunset Memorial Park with Tom Antrim, the CEO of French, the French family of companies. Okay. And tell us what you're doing here today. Well, thank, number one, thank you, Gail, for coming out and being with us on Memorial Day. And I think what we realize quickly on a day like today, it's for so many, it's a day off, it's barbecues, it's time with family, and it is and should be all of those things. But the reason we have that available to us is that there's people who gave their life for our freedoms. And today for us at Sunset, this is about memorializing those lives, telling their stories. And so we've brought in um, some actors that you've seen, so you'll see a clip in just a little bit, uh, but we have some actors that came in and learned stories of people who were buried here at Sunset Memorial Park or might be notable um, stories in New Mexico history. And they're telling those stories so that people remember why we have those freedoms. And I think that's a, that's a key point for us. And it's a wonderful way to get people to come to the cemetery and remember why Memorial Day is what it is. Exactly. I think that this is the second year that we've done this event. And last year, we weren't certain how people would take coming to the cemetery for storytelling like this. And what we heard from many of the veterans that came out and were part of sitting and watching these stories being told is that they felt honored. And for us, that was, that was the home run. There's a lot of things happening on Memorial Day. There's a lot of wonderful services. We feel that we've struck a chord with being able to tell those stories. And so we're thankful that they shared their, their thoughts about what we're doing here. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Appreciate it. And a happy Memorial Day. And remember to honor our veterans, both living and dead. Dear Lieutenant John Calvin Kolsch, I just wanted to Dear Lieutenant John Calvin Kolsch, The first time I met you, we were being shot at in North Korea. It was July 3rd, 1951. I was flying a Corsair fighter on a recon mission when I took heavy fire about 35 miles from Wonsan. Uh, my plane burst into flames and I sent out a distress call, Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Uh, when I looked down and saw the floor of the cockpit on fire, I ejected as fast as I could, deployed my parachute, and landed on the side of a mountain and landed hard. Well, my arms and legs were severely burned and, and after the shock wore off, the pain became excruciating. It was getting dark and I was miles behind enemy lines. Well, the enemy ground fire was so intense, I said my prayers and braced for the worst. And that's when I heard the sound I'll never forget. The sweet sound of your chopper. It wasn't your first war, Lieutenant. You'd served as a bomber pilot in World War II. After a long tour of duty, you were called back to serve in Korea. You could have gone home you passed up a rotation home and volunteered to keep on fighting, requesting a transfer. So that was just the bravest thing. I mean, you could have gone home to your wife and kids. You could have gone to law school like you wanted and never looked back. But you always said you felt like you were urgently needed there. You continued to serve. Well, when you heard my distress call, it was getting dark, and the fog made visibility all but impossible. 
Despite the immense risk, you volunteered to find me and get me out. When you finally did find me, your crew began to hoist me up, you hovered low, and then you took multiple hits and the chopper crashed. Went right down into the side of the mountain. It's a miracle none of us were killed. For three days, we hid in the mountains avoiding enemy patrols. We spent most of the time fussing over my burns, making sure I had enough water. When we ran out of rations, we had no choice. We had to head for the coast. It was too painful for me to walk. Legs burned, so you and your crewmen carried me. Carried me for six long and painful days. We finally reached a village and hid in a hut. Those Chinese soldiers found us. That's when we were thrown into that POW camp. There we were barely given anything to eat or drink. Had to march for hours in what seemed like endless circles. We grew skinny and weak. And you, Lieutenant, you insisted on sharing what little rations you had with me. You even demanded medicine for the men who got sick. And you were tortured, tortured over and over again by those guards. And every time, well, you refused to give up information. <laughs> to this day, it's the greatest display of guts I've ever seen. You know, a year later, ceasefire was enacted. I was free. I got to come home. I got to see my wife, my three beautiful daughters. I got to go back to college, travel the world. Should I even learn to play the cello? I don't know if I ever told you that was a dream of mine. You didn't come home, Lieutenant. You got sick and you died in that POW camp. Now, when I heard of your passing, I swore I'd do the same. I swore I would commit my life to serving those to whom I, I committed it. To dedicate your gift to the second chance at life to make it the best one possible. You know, when I look at my grandchildren, I, uh, I think of you. I imagine what you'd look like as an old man. I can picture you pushing your own grandchildren in the swings, telling them stories about the war, telling them stories about the time you saved in my life. You certainly didn't have to do that. I tell them that story often. I hope they have your sense of honor deeply embedded in their hearts, too. December Fidelis, Captain John V. Wilkinson.